All right, a big time good morning from the Garden State of New Jersey. Hello, everybody. Hello, my panelists, Steve, Mark, and ladies and gentlemen in the audience. Uh, Nuan, if I'm pumped up today, it's because of you, man. You put, you played that music that got me all wired up now. Now, now, now that's it. So I'm going to blame you for if I'm just acting a little goofy today. But it was a great start. Thank you. Great, great introduction. Uh, again, our company's name is called Capture Risk. It's like capturing risk. My name is Sham Gopal Swami. I'm the CEO, the founder of the company, and I have VGK7. She's the uh, CTO of the company. She's also here, and she will be joining us later on to answer questions if, uh, uh, from the audience and from yourself. So what are we? So we are a pure play mortgage technology company for commercial real estate, only commercial real estate, because the other side is residential. We are not in that space. We are pure commercial real estate mortgage tech for lenders, appraisers, and borrowers in the small business banking space, which are loans under $5 million or properties under $5 million. Now, why did I start this company? If you are a small business bank lender like what I was two years ago, you're very frustrated and very upset because you're making your client, which is a small business owner, wait for three to six months just to get a loan. Now, all that the small business owner wants is to start a business. They're not looking for a loan. They want to start a business. But what we are doing, we're making them wait forever. Three to six months. Do you think that is a reasonable time or is it acceptable now, especially post-COVID, when everybody wants to digitize and everybody wants things to be happening fast in today's day and age in the world? So that is why we started Captures. And today's process is, this is how it looks. Extremely fragmented, extremely disorganized and as you can see it doesn't matter if it's a small bank or a big bank and the biggest bottleneck is with the appraisers and the appraisers are the folks who come in and value the company so what our goal is to automate and integrate the entire process by using an integrated workflow and using data and data science to come up with the valuation of the property and integrate it with the credit risk analytics inside a bank so the appraisal process and the underwriting process can be done in a matter of weeks and so they don't have to wait for a long time now why is this so critical if you think about the appraisal community, 10 years ago, there was 100,000 people. Today, there's only 85,000. It's super shortage, and on the chart on the right, is very obvious, extremely biased, and there's very, very little people who want to become appraisers these days. So our goal is to help this industry, which is a pretty large size. If you think about it, it's almost 16 trillion in commercial properties, 8 trillion in just the space that we are looking for. And we want to do that by creating a marketplace where we put our lenders, which are these small banks that are struggling to help these business owners. We want to implement our software to these banks. So their borrowers, the appraisers who are the service providers, and of course the existing loans can be automated and valued within the system. The ultimate goal is to help the small business owner get the loan within a month and not wait for several months. And the differentiator that we have is a, our omni-channel workflow. And more importantly, we're using data and data science to evaluate the valuation, evaluate the property and bake it within the entire credit process because right now it is in, entirely fragmented and a lot of friction this is our company to landscape as you can see it is extremely crowded in most of the other fintech space but if you look at just property-based fintech obviously you have rocket mortgage and loan depot and they are all players in the residential very few players in the commercial side which is what we are trying to capture especially in the five million and under loan size and create this marketplace for the small business owners and the lenders. Within the commercial space, obviously there are a lot of other players, but as I said, either they are focusing just on the collateral valuation or they are focusing just on the credit side of the valuation. What we are trying to do is integrate the entire process. So an analyst comes into the bank, they are in our software from the morning to the evening until they finish the loan. That is our simple goal. That's our team and uh, George is not here with us today, but he is the appraiser. And of course, I have VG, and we are very excited to be part of RevTech Labs, and they are guiding us through to help us accelerate to the next level. And we have about 10 other uh, uh, developers and uh, employees across the country. Why us? If you look at it, if you are looking for, these are the four important characteristics, and we have an absolute razor focus on democratizing commercial real estate loans under $5 million across every organization. And we are going after regional banks and credit unions who will be our typical clients who are looking to digitize, who are looking to modernize. We are, our team members combined, we have 75 years of experience in, in finance, technology, and appraisals. 
those are the three major bottlenecks that are having right now that the banks are facing. Ultimately, we want to be a rocketmortgage.com or a blend.com for commercial properties. We started a company back in January 2021. We've raised a million dollars so far. We are in the market again for another million dollars. And our goal is to end the year in 2025 with about 120 clients and $35 million in uh, revenue. Again, that is our company. And I would like to end here. Basically, if you think about it, just think of the small business owner who wants a loan and he has to wait for three to six months. We're trying to make it shorter by just reducing redundancy and eliminating the manual process so the entire loan process gets done within a matter of weeks. In today's day and age, that is necessary. It's not even a luxury. With that, I will end and I will leave to the audience and the panelists for, uh, for Q&A. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so, so much. That was great, great. And as the buzzer was going off, so perfect, perfect. So we'll do like our applause and uh, we will bring up um, Mark and Steve. You want Perfect. Hey, it's Mark. Can you hear me, Laura? Yes, we do. Yep, you're awesome. as, you're up. Cool. You want me to go first, Steve? Yeah, that go works. ahead, Mark. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, thanks. Very very interesting. Um, just to uh, let me kind of cut to the chase on time, you know, given timing. Good intro. Like I like the energy that you bring. Right, that was captivating or catches catches me catches my attention. Um, I was initially. I, I was a little confused in the first half, which is definitely a tough place to be. Um, I know this space really well, and we're actually doing a lot of work in this space right now. And somewhere between you illustrating the broken process, this like massively complex process, you, you kind of went deep on appraisers as the bottleneck or as the breakage, and then you kind of swung back to marketplace. Um, so, that's one of the challenges is like, if you're trying to explain to me how, how complicated this, this market is, how complex it might be, you've developed a view and have an edge based on the fact that you've either experienced a pain point and or uh, you know, have some edge in terms of uh, domain expertise. And so I was just kind of, my head was wrapped around breakage specifically at the appraisal part of the process versus marketplace. Because marketplace triggers thoughts about, you know, competitive pricing, you know, thinking back to where lending tree started, uh, when banks compete, you win. So I was kind of, you know, conceptually, I was lost up front early. So that's something I would try to clarify. The second point I kind of tie into that is, if this is more marketplace in terms of its positioning for commercial real estate transactions, at this stage, you know, I got you guys are well past prototype, it sounds like you're already generating um, you know, not only leads, but potentially customers and revenue. I'd want to understand how this note, this safe, you know, this next million bucks tees up the, here's what we're going to go kind of build, test and learn next. Um, because that allows me to qualify, you know, what, what fishing hole you're going in this company's capture risk is going into, like, where are we trying to create value and why? And I think at the seed series, pre-series A, where you are now, before you hit this inflection point of ARR, it's, it's where are we testing and learning in the market and why? And I think that's where most of our conversations would be, you know, potential investor and and team. So I'll kind of stop there. Um, yeah, but really, really interesting. But uh, yeah, it's, I think it needs a little bit more clarity up front to then kind of focus the conversation and really get to what are we, what are we going to prototype, build, and scale into over the next couple of years. Perfect. So I'll stop there. Steve, I don't know if you want to take it yeah, or jump, jump on that yeah, or not. Yeah. A couple things sim similar, I think, feedback. I, I noticed there's, uh, and just looking at uh, uh, you guys ahead of time, that there's a couple of different products. So maybe in the pitch, a little bit of an explanation. I know it's a brief pitch here. So just some basic definition of each side of the product, the marketplace side versus the, the, the lens side, the pro lens side. So the other thing too that, that Mark indicated that I think is really critical kind of uh, for early stage investors is just, you know, um, some explanation of use of proceeds. Um, what are you going to do with a million bucks and to what milestone, you know, as early stage investors in particular, um, we always like to know what the structure is a little bit too. What, what facility are you raising capital under? We all know we stand to get diluted fairly substantially as institutional investors come on board. So, you know, what the structure is and there we go. Some of the uh, terms, good. Um, any discounts, 
uh, anything that would be uh, relevant to early stage, um, spending a little bit of time on that, I think is useful. But um, I like Mark him a, him a little bit on the uh, kind of trying to understand the difference between the marketplace and the, and the back end product side. So I, I'll leave the rest of the time to you. Um, if you want to just get, go a little deeper there, I'd love to hear a little bit about it. Absolutely. Thank you guys. That's great feedback. Great, great questions. Uh, yes, that is definitely a challenge that we face that I continue to face going from detail to high level because it is a, although it is a day-to-day -day problem that everybody faces, it's still a complex area. Sure. So to answer your question, uh, Mark, the, the goal is to be a marketplace, but you have to start somewhere and you want to start from wherever the biggest pain point is or the biggest bottleneck is. And the biggest bottleneck is the appraisal process. At the end of the day, we don't want to become an appraisal technology company. We don't. Our goal is to be a mortgage technology, but we have to solve the bottleneck. Otherwise, what happens is we're going back to the chart that I showed. Either you are in the mortgage side or in the, uh, on the appraisal side. We want to just simplify it and bring them two together. So that is why we are focusing on the collateral valuation part, trying to automate it as much as we can, human in the loop automation, so to say, and then build outwards and say that, okay, we don't want to just stop here because ultimately the timeline is still not shortened. Our goal is to go to the business owner and say, hey, are you still getting your loan done in a month? His answer is no. So we want to just take that piece that we automated and then grow it and bake it into the credit process and give it as one EPRO lend underwriting software to these banks. And once we have four or five banks in a certain region, let's say it's New Jersey, let's say I have four or five banks, I'm going to tell them, hey, why not I just bring in online traffic for, the, for you and you guys should start competing to them. And then open the front end or the front line, which is called Mezzanine, which is the online portal. That is how we are trying to build the referral banks first. I need to get into them first and then open the front line for them. So it is a two-pronged approach. A lot of people have asked me, hey, why do you want to be an all thing for everybody? Why not just focus on one thing? My point is, you're not solving the problem for the business owner. The business owner still has to wait three months. Unless you give them something that is simple, easy for all, all lenders to use, a unified integrated platform with the modeling capability, you're still not solving the problem for the business owner. So I, yes, I want to be an all things for everybody, but in a very simplified way. And uh, that's yeah. the first question he asked. And uh, the second part, yes, we are raising funds through safe notes. And as you can see it on the screen, uh, the cap is $10 million and the discount is 20%. And primarily to expand our management team. Right now we have uh, myself who's handling finance, business development, sales and marketing, uh, credit risk and so on. And I have VG superpower in the technology space and I have George in the appraisal space. We need like at least another one or maybe another two to, to do the deal with the data science part because our core of the modeling capabilities still come from the building the algorithm. So we need somebody in-house and we do have a team in Europe that is building it for us, which is why we are with our MVP right now. We want to just scale it up and obviously purchasing data. Guys, today, you know, no matter how beautiful a car that I built, I still need gas to fill it in. So that is how data is. Data is a new oil. So we want to purchase these data from the data providers. We have we have agreements and we've negotiated a, uh, a working agreement, a working deal. So that's where the funds will be used. And plus, I just want to focus on building the business and not worry about paychecks. I need a partner who will just come in and say, Sham, go do what you do best. VG, go do what you do best. George, go do what you do best. You've got your card for the next six months and come back with 20 clients. We will do it. I like the energy. It's good. Yeah, one last point. The, the other thing that I wrote down and forgot to mention is you mentioned this kind of 5 million or sub 5 million market. Um, I would just put some more substance or more something more around that because that, if that's a differentiator here for the business model, for the product, whatever the, the platform is, I'd want to kind of pull on that string a bit. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. And then the other, the other data points that I would just, I mean, this isn't really feedback, but it's more kind of just contextual. If, if we were going to follow up, I'd want you to start to show some level of understanding in the next pitch, not the five minute pitch to get the two hour meeting. But in the two hour meeting, I'd be like, all right, like I, I, I think Lightbox is one of the interesting technology software platform providers in the space, super well funded. Right. So I'd, I'd want you to be able to balance your differentiated views and edge on this market against some of the incumbents. Um, I know you tried to do that with the broader matrix screen, but those. That, that's just a lot of information. So I, I think you, you should expect, I think you should expect investors to start to really want to compare and contrast your views against what's already in the marketplace. 
because it's it's competitive. I think it's competitive, and so that, that's where we'd want to dive in. I think further. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that, my, my last, my closing comment is this, and we're running out of time too. Um, so the, I appreciate the additional detail here. When I think about use of proceeds, it, it has a different, perhaps, uh, uh, I think about it a little differently when somebody's on their second million dollars than when they are on their first million. So I, I would, I think the, the slides that I've seen that give me a great deal of confidence in the, the leadership team are the ones that, that from a use of uh, proceeds standpoint, they, they say specifically what was accomplished with the first million and what the inflection point or the milestone is that they expect to reach with the second million. So it's, it's um, again, maybe for a longer pitch, but you know, uh, you guys have um, obviously been very productive. Uh, you seems like you've used the first million dollars well. Give yourself some credit and, and be specific about what's been accomplished and, and what you hope to accomplish in, with the next million. I think that gives a, a, an investor a great deal of uh, comfort to, to know where you're headed specifically. Awesome. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, uh, Capturist team. That was great. Uh